Oh, good morning, everybody. Uh, first, just a quick nod to the Open Power team. I was really excited to see what they had done there and the work that's going on. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about some AI things today, uh, trusted AI in particular, but you know, training models, moving data around, being able to attach accelerators, all those things are really important. And you know, the Open Capi, Open MI stuff in particular is great. And you know, uh, actually, honestly, I did work on the power instruction set there a long time ago, so I'm really happy to see that that move forward. So. Uh, so the people who know me usually think of me either as that open source guy or the, you know, the guy who does things with OpenJS or uh, you know, someone who is you know, cloud oriented. Um, but actually I have some other responsibilities at IBM too. Uh, the Center for Open Data and AI Technology is, is one of my responsibilities. And uh, for those of you who don't know, what IBM joined this group a few years ago. We actually helped found it. It's the Partnership on AI. And, and it's there to go create you know, the best practices for using AI um, to actually champion ethical use of AI as well, too. So I was one of the IBM leaders who helped to go and shepherd that forward and, and bring the group together and, and make that work. So um, this topic, however, is something that I think we're all starting to see in the press quite a bit, right? Trusting AI, very difficult thing these days. And, and why is that, right? Well, you know, we've seen some of the examples where people are tampering with models, right? When you tamper with it or tamper with the data to color something, it can create a problem, right? Is it fair? Does it have biases? Uh, tremendous issues around race and, and gender and other things that can potentially impact how society views the use of these models, right? Um, can anybody understand how it made its decision? You know, you saw some examples earlier of deep learning and the path that a model can possibly take through its progression and how it got to where it is. And it's going beyond necessarily the level of which we humans can grok what's going on there, right? Okay? And then, of course, is it accountable, right? Throughout its life cycle, can you figure out the decisions it made and then what to do about those? This is a hard one. There's not really much out there yet, and, and I'm not really going to talk much about that one. But those are sort of the four pillars as, as I look at decisions that are made by a computer for me that are going to impact my life. So uh, in the news, I think, uh, you know, just to point this one back out, uh, you see an image there, right? And that image is, is what we all would see. However, um, you know, the computer sees something a little different, right? It's all math. It's ones and zeros put together, looking at the bit, you know, the little bitmap around everything and trying to figure out, you know, what that is. Okay, great. We saw a little of that earlier, right? Um, but then if you go and attack that target, you can actually have that same image. We'll see it. We'll look at it. The human eye won't see anything wrong with it. But it's now been attacked and, and the AI sees nothing. Now, uh, this is adversarial machine learning, right? And people can actually go and use this to attack models and come out with outcomes that you don't want to have. Uh, there's, uh, and I'm not going to really go into this one, there's an adversarial robustness toolbox that IBM has done. Uh, there's, uh, if you want to go to the URL, it's art-demo.mybluemix.net. And you can see this at work, and you can see how to mitigate those attacks as well, too. Um, my favorite example on that is there's a cat, the Siamese cat. You can look at it, you can attack it, and when you attack it, the AI decides it's an ambulance, right? So you know, but to you that picture just looks like a cat. So this is something that's that's really a very serious problem that we have to make sure as we want to trust these models. Okay, bias, uh, pretty famous thing out in the press as well too. You can Google this, you can look it up. Uh, North Point's Compass system was engaged out there. They thought they were helping with the process of figuring out you know, what kind of sentencing should happen and uh, looking at folks and building a model and hey, great. But it, you know, it flagged black defend defendants um, almost 2x as much as white defendants who already had had a previous criminal defense or, or uh, offense, I should say. So this is things that you know, the press discovered by going in and doing investigative reporting, right? And people more and more and more are gonna go start looking at these things as AI technologies are employed, 
to basically say, is this being done well? Is it being done fairly, right? Bias is clearly a problem. And it can creep into the data, it can creep into the model. There's, there's lots of things that can cause this to happen. So IBM, how would we solve this? Let's do some open source stuff, right? That's what I do. We've joined a lot of organizations. We have this long history. So there's a trusted AI lifecycle that we have to go and engage. So we've created some open source projects. We've put them out there. There's the adversarial robustness toolbox. I just talked about that. There's AI fairness and there's AI explainability. And soon there'll be something coming for lineage as well too. So let's just talk about fairness and, and um, understandability, explainability. So you know, in, in the fairness world, we want to make sure that we get the biases out of the model. So if you go out and take a look, there's uh, AIF360.mybluemix.net. Again, you can get quite a bit more data on this. Um, that same compass example, go click on it, try it, see what happens. Just simply reweighting that model just a little bit could take almost all of the bias out of that model. Of course, there's a whole series of different uh, uh, algorithms that you can use, metrics you can look at. Uh, there's at least 10, I think it's more like 12 mitigation algorithms right now and over 70 uh, fairness metrics that are in play here. It's a Python package. Explainability, same thing. Okay. Um, think about being out there and you're going to get a loan, right? It's something that we all uh, worry about, right, in our lives. We want to finance that new boat or the new house or whatever. And there's going to loan officer who's going to interact with that. And the financial institution behind them, they've got models, right? They look at a lot of data. They look at you, your ones and zeros and numbers and things, and they crunch that. And they have a machine learning model that gives you a score and basically decides whether you get that credit or not. And there's many factors that might go into that. How many times have you gone and applied for credit recently? Um, have you ever been late on payments within so many days, et cetera? They, they look at a lot of different uh, weightings and, and things to characteristics to come up with this. So what we've seen, and this is a project that we put out within the last couple of weeks, it's uh, AIX360 or, or explainability model, is that uh, you can actually go in and use tools to help people explain how the AI made its decision looking at the tags, explaining how this goes. And, and think about it. There's multiple constituents in this case that I just talked about, the loan case, right? There's certainly the end user, you, who wants to understand how the AI made its decision. And it might be some specific things that you should get feedback on within that. But then there's a the loan officer who wants to see how you compare it to other people in making his decision, as well as the scorings that you had across various aspects of that model. And then there's, of course, the data scientist who's trying to keep that thing up over time and manage the life cycle of it and understand how it's making its decisions over time, how it's being improved, changed, et cetera. So this is a toolbox that will help you go and do that. All right. So um, we're not just putting these things out in open source. These are projects that we're using internally as well. Um, if you come to IBM and take a look at Watson OpenScale, you'll see that these capabilities are things that we've gone and built into the dashboard, the insights dashboard that uh, helps us track and measure outcomes in AI. And then, of course, um, what's become much more important these days is managing regulatory compliance. So you know, I, I got a chance the other day to meet with IBM's officer who's in charge of these things who's using the tools that we've created and working with the various teams who have these models to make sure that they pass the tests, the ISO tests, and other things that we have to, to, of course, maintain regulatory compliance, right? So decisions get made. They get made with a lot more trust. We can track our models. You, too, can take advantage of these things. They're out in the open. You can come. You can participate. Um, it's, it's part of product as well now, too. So being the open source guy, how else can we go get more involved in this? What can IBM go and do? Well, we've announced that we're joining the Linux Foundation AI group, LFAI. Right? They were formed a, a year or so ago, I guess. Um, we've been informally part of it for a while, working out in some of the work groups, like uh, the ML workflow 
Um, but we want to take this trust topic into the discussion that's going on there. So you're going to see us very active in that. I, I invite you all as well to come out and join the group. We think it's a great group. They've got some good projects that are going on within it. And I really thank the, the Linux Foundation for, for taking on this topic with us as well, too. So trust and transparency. You'll see us doing a lot more with it there. OK. The other place to come and join in, you want to participate in the code, understand the projects, be part of it, uh, come to that coday.org site. That's an easy way of finding it. Or you can find the code on GitHub. Just go out, do a search, and pick it up. And we're happy to go and participate with you. So that was it. I just want to say thank you. And uh, hope you all have a, an excellent conference here this, this week.